Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to go over uh, a few problems from the review activity. Uh, let's let's get started with uh, problem 1a. So 1a is asking us to, to simplify, and I guess a lot of these problems that I want to go over from problem 1 uh, request us to simplify uh, the expression as much as possible. Okay, so the, the first expression is uh, 7 times 6 minus 16 take away 6. And, and so there's a few things going on here, but, but hopefully what comes up in the, in the back of your mind is this notion of order of operations, right? So, so in a mathematical statement, um, you know, there might be multiple things happening, and, and really to, to make sure that we all come to the same conclusion when we look at this, same sta this, this statement, uh, there, there ought to be an order in which we do these things, these operations. Uh, and, and so uh, if you remember... Uh, you know, there's one acronym people use for this, and you know there are many others, but but the one that that I learned was uh, PEMDAS, right? So uh, parentheses or or uh, grouping symbols, exponents, multiplication, and division, and 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 there when you do multiplication and division, this really happens. Uh, here, actually, maybe I should rewrite this so it's more illustrative of, of what. What order of operations really suggests? Sometimes people write, like to write it like like this. Right, so here, uh, like I said a moment ago, this is a parentheses uh, and grouping symbols. And we'll talk about this notion of grouping symbols more um, in one of the later videos. Uh, then exponentiation we do we do next uh, multiplication and division and so these are on the same uh, in some sense the same level and when we see multiple instances of multiplication and division we really do this or apply the operations uh, from left to right in the statement so here this is the left to right and similarly uh, addition and subtraction are also on a similar level, and, and when we see them in the same statement, we apply left to right. And there are a few little uh, mathematical ideas that you might have learned that let you sort of give you a little bit of wiggle room to work outside of these order of operations, but, but really this is sort of the, the first set of building blocks when it comes to dealing with mathematical statements. Um, and so... If I look at this expression here, um, one thing I'd warn you not to do is to, to look at the 16 here and subtract away 6, right? So so this statement here tells me, so you know, we're going to multiply 7 and 6, then we're going to subtract away 16, then we're going to subtract away 6. And if I were to subtract away 6 from the 16, you know, we would see, we would see a 10, right? And this would look like 7 times 6 minus 10. If, if we were not, you know, quite working with order of operations, if we looked at the statement and sort of went with our gut, right? And, and this wouldn't be the same thing as taking away 16 and then taking away 6, right? That's not the same thing as taking away 10. So, so this is something I want to warn you from, from doing, right? And, and really, uh, if we wanted to do, you know, subtraction of 16 and then subtraction of 6, uh, really we'd have to recognize that this, this 16 is, is really it's really negative or minus 16. When you look at these expressions, uh, really these terms in the expressions, uh, they want to keep their, uh, you want to be aware of the, the sign of that term. Okay, uh, so what you really, really want to do here is, here maybe I'll just write a little check. Uh, so, you know, if we follow order of operations, we really see that this multiplication happens first, and so we get 7 times 6 is 42, and we still have uh, minus 16 minus 6. I'm going to write an equal sign here, and, and really that equal sign I'm expressing is meant to be uh, meant to be this original expression, saying that uh, 42 minus 16 minus 6 is the same as the original expression, and then we subtract left to right, 
And so 42 minus 16 is, I believe that's 26. And we saw that minus six, and that's the same as 20. And, and you would still get the same answer, by the way, if you uh, did this, if you did minus 16, minus six as well, and then subtract away from that. Or subtract that away from seven times six. Okay. So this is what we get when we follow order of operations. Uh, the next example I want to go over is, is another order of operations problem. Uh, here uh, in 1c we're looking at 5 take away 3 times 2 minus 10 divided by negative 4. And when we look at this problem, you know, you might have heard about, or you might be familiar with this idea of distribution, right? We can, we can distribute this negative 3 into the parentheses to uh, that, the 2 minus 10. Um, and that, that's fair. Uh, there's some, some worries that you might have when you do that, and, and actually it turns out to be easier uh, just to really do the 2 minus 10, right? Just let's, you know, we see the numbers explicitly, we can sub do the subtraction, uh, and we can follow order of operations, and, and uh, that's, that really is the simplest way to go. And so later, when we start dealing with expressions and equations with variables, we might use this idea of distribution, you know, and, and I'll talk about distribution some more in a moment, um, or later in this video. Uh, you know, distribution will be really helpful for dealing with expressions and variables where we don't have cold, hard numbers. Um, but when we're dealing with the expressions without variables, uh, it, life really just is easiest when we do follow order operations. And so here we get negative eight inside the parentheses. And so this is the same as uh, five minus three times negative eight divided by negative four, right? So we, we dealt with the parentheses first. And there's another set of parentheses over on the right here. This negative four, but there's nothing happening inside that set of parentheses telling us to, to really do anything more there. Really, that parentheses is just there to tell us that we're looking at at this number negative four on the right. Okay, and so I look at this expression and, and, and really the next things that I can do uh, are multiplication and division. And again, we do these left to right and we get five. Uh, here I see that, you know, there's no operation between uh, this, this minus three and this negative eight. There's no operation between those two quantities, so we we assume that it's multiplication. We assume that it's multiplication. And so when I see that multiplication of, of this negative three, right, I wanna keep my sign associated to my number um, and, and uh, multiply with negative eight, well, when we multiply a negative with a negative, uh, we get a positive, right? So this is the same as plus 24 divided by negative 4. And the, the division happens, and, and this is the same as 5 uh, one, plus 24 divided by negative 4. Uh, that's you know, in the same way that when you multiply a positive and a negative number, the result is negative. Uh, when you divide a positive number and a negative number, the result is also negative. Right, so here this is uh, this is minus six. And then five minus six, uh, this is this is negative one. And right, so maybe just to state a few ideas here that that might feel a little um, uh, a little shaky or you know a little rusty. Um, so if I have some positive number and I multiply it with a positive number, I, you know, we know this is, this is positive. Uh, a negative times a negative, this is also uh, a negative. Oh, no, I'm sorry, sorry. Speaking too soon, this is also positive. Really, if, if the signs are the same,
between two numbers we're multiplying, our result is positive. And if the signs differ, right, so if I multiply some positive number with a negative number, the result is negative or, or vice versa. Um, and so hopefully the, the statements I'm writing are, are clear to you, it's not really mathematically, uh, they're not really correct, you know, equation-wise, but, but uh, hopefully you get, you get the picture. Um, is there anything to say about addition and subtraction? Um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll say something about that here. So, you know, looking at this 5 minus 6, um, and, and knowing that it's negative one, uh, one way I like to think about adding and subtracting quantities is 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 money and debt, right? So like here, if I have five dollars and and I and I owe someone six, right? I can think of like subtraction or, or negatives as as owing someone money. Um, well, if I only have five dollars, you know, I could try and pay them off, but I can't pay it all pay all of it off. Uh, I'd really still owe them. One dollar, right? And that, that minus sign there, that negative sign there, is telling me it's it's money that I, I still owe. Uh, so that's one way you can think about uh, adding and subtracting negative numbers. And, you know, this is sometimes can be a little tricky. Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna bounce around here, uh, and and I want to look at one uh, f. So one f is is telling us. Uh, to simplify the the product of the two fractions, 21 over 16 and 6 over 28. And and like many things in math, there's there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, but but the thing you should have in mind, and this is this is really only specific to to multiplying two fractions, is that uh, yeah, multiplying fractions really ends up being the nicest operation you can do with fractions. You really just multiply straight across. So this is really 21 times 6, all divided by 16 times 28. Multiplying fractions is really the nicest thing you can do with, with them. I'm going to really emphasize these, these multiplication signs here. Um, and so... So this is the the only operation with fractions that, uh, at least of the of the basic operations, the core you know plus minus times divide. Uh, this is the only operation where you just sort of push everything uh, through the numerator and push everything through through the nom denominator. Um, uh, addition, subtraction, dividing uh, fractions. You know you have to be a little careful with what you're doing. Okay, so multiplying these two fractions, uh, you know, we could really multiply this out, 21 times 6 and, and 16 times 28, but but I know that there are many fractions that are equivalent to each other, um, that are the same as each other, really representing the same part of a whole. And so uh, we can always reduce a fraction by by dividing the same number from the top and the bottom. Right, and so I know, I look at this numerator, and I know that it's going to be divisible by 3 because I'm multiplying in my numerator, uh, something that's divisible by 3, this is 21. So I can imagine dividing out uh, a 3, or sorry, I mean to say, uh, you know, that is true, but actually let me, let me instead say, let me divide out a, a 20, or sorry, a 7 from the top and the bottom. And I, I'm saying that because, you know, I look at my numerator, it's going to be, the result's going to be divisible by 7, because we have a 21 being multiplied in the numerator. And the denominator is going to be divisible by 7 because uh, it's got a 28 in the product. Right? And so when I do that, I'm really peeling away 7 from that 21, and there's leaves behind 3. And peeling a 7 away from that 28, dividing it out, and leaves behind the 4. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too crazy. Uh, I don't think I said that the best way. But hopefully you're still with me on this. You know, so right now we have three times six over sixteen times four, and 
you know, we can keep doing this, right? Uh, we can keep reducing our fraction if we see more uh, common factors, common numbers that we can divide from the top and the bottom. Uh, and, and so I'm going to do it again because I see that uh, this, this 6 and the 16, uh, they share a common factor. So here I can divide out a 2. And we get uh, 3 times 3 over 8 times 4. And so at the end of the day, this is 9 over 32. And, and so what we did here, dividing from the top and the bottom, it, it really uh, only works out because there's no addition or subtraction involved at all. So not, not to get too complicated with things, but because this is a nice clean, you know, just a bunch of multiplication in the, in the numerator and, and, and denominator, uh, we can sort of peel away common, common multiples. Okay. Uh, so let's go to let's go to one e and, and this you know ends up being similar in spirit multiplication and division uh, they're very much alike um, you know division really is just just kind of funny looking multiplication so if I look at one e I'm trying to take the expression five over twelve and divide it by the expression fifteen over sixteen and so uh, a Division of fractions, well, division is really, in some sense, the opposite of multiplication. Um, and so I can think of this division, of this fraction 15 over 16, uh, not as division, as, but instead as multiplication, as, as multiplying by the reciprocal here. 16 over 15. It's multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, and then, you know, we, we already talked about how we multiply fractions together. Uh, we multiply straight across, so this is the same as 5 times 16 over 12 times 15. And so all we did was we multiplied by the reciprocal of the second fraction, and multiplying meant multiplying uh, these two fractions here uh, straight across their numerators and their denominators. Okay, and then we can play the same game. Uh, we can reduce if we see any common factors, right? This is, there's no addition or subtraction in the numerator, so, so we can cancel out you know, parts that are in common. I can divide out, uh, let me do, you know, there, there's some big numbers here that we could divide up, but maybe let's just do it in parts so it feels a little bit more manageable. Um, I'm going to divide out a 5 first. All right, so I see that that, that would be behind a 1 and a 3. And then we would get, uh, well, 1 times 16, or maybe I'll just, I'll just write it like this, 16 over 12 times 3. And then we can still reduce by dividing out uh, 4 from the numerator and denominator. And so that leaves behind a 4 and a 3. And so at the end of the day, our final result is... Uh, so what is this? This is 4 in the numerator over uh, 9 in the denominator. So that's our final answer. And there's multiple ways we could have done this. And in fact, uh, let's see. Actually, I was, never mind. I, I thought I noticed something that, that actually ended up not being there. So that's the final answer. And maybe let me let me end uh, uh, that problem there. Um, okay. Let's look at addition of fractions. So there's problem uh, 1D. where we're looking at uh, the mixed numbers uh, 2 and 5, 6, added with 3 and 1, 4. So, you know, I look at these mixed numbers and, and it, you know, it, 
first off, I should say that that you know I, I get this question a lot. Um, you know, how do you want your or how do I want my answers? Uh, you know, it's perfectly valid to to write these as, as decimals and then add them up. Um, and, and it's also perfectly valid to to you know add these as mixed numbers and keep the result as a mixed number. But but I I really 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 think the easiest approach and the way that will be most beneficial. Uh, you know, as you continue with mathematics, is to, to write these as improper fractions and, and deal with them as improper fractions. That really ends up being, uh, you know, requiring the, the least amount of things you need to remember. Okay, so I look at this 2 and 5, 6, and, and maybe just to get a, a sense of this, you know, this is really saying that I have... I can... I can imagine that 2 is saying I have uh, 6 out of 6 slices of pizza here, and 6 out of 6 slices of pizza here. And then I have 5 out of 6 slices of pizza here. Alright, so at the end of the day, uh, that 2 and 5 6 is, well, how many, how many 6 is it? Uh, well, there's really 12, 6 here, and 5, 6 here. Now this is the same as 17, 6 on the left. And then here we can we can play the same game and, and interpret this, this 3 as... Uh, That's four out of four slices of pizza, uh, three times over, right? And then one more fourth. So this is really telling me that I have, I'm adding my fraction 17 out of six with, well, how many slices of fourths do I have over here? I, you know, there's four, eight, 12, and then 13. I have 13 out of four slices. All right, so this might feel like it's more challenging or harder, but but we would have had to do uh, uh, some fraction addition at the end of the day. So this is uh, more or less the same idea as as if you were to try and add these as mixed numbers. Um, okay, so I look at these two fractions and and I want to add them, but we can really only add fractions uh, and 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 make you know sense of it if if the denominators are the same. And, and I look at these two fractions and the denominators aren't the same. Uh, they, they simply aren't. And so we can take this idea, you know, earlier how we were simplifying fractions by, by dividing the same number from the top and the bottom. Uh, well, we can, we can sort of do the opposite. We can also call, look at fractions a slightly different way by multiplying a number to the top and the bottom. And so if we do that and we pick the right numbers, we can make the denominators the same. Right, so I want to look for a number that's divisible by 6 and 4. And that'll be the denominator I want to make. Right, so, so I can look at this fraction, 17 over 6. And I can multiply it by 2 over 2. And, and this is still the same fraction at the end of the day. Right, this is in some sense just multiplying by 1 in a fancy over way. Right? 2 divided by 2 is still 1. And, so, and multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. And when we do that, well, we know how multiplication of fractions works. We just multiply their numerators, multiply their denominators, and we get, we get 34 over 12. And this doesn't help us out quite yet, because that's still not the same denominator as the other fraction, but, but we can play the same game with the other fraction. And I can multiply by uh, 3 over 3. Right, just a, a funny looking uh, 1. Right, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And when we do that, we get 39 over 12. And now we're in luck uh, because the denominators are the same. Right, this is where our choice of multiplying by 2 over 2 and 3 over 3 came from, is, is really to make these denominators the same. And 
And then how do we add these fractions? Well, this is like saying I have 34 twelfths. And if I cut up a pizza into, into 12 slices, uh, well, I have 34 of those twelfths. And then similarly, I have 39 twelfths on the right. And so how many in total do I have? Well, I just, I add their numerators, kind of the number of pizzas I have, uh, number of slices of pizzas I have, uh, and I'm talking about slices that are cut up into twelfths. So I add the numerators, keep the denominator, and keep the denominator the same. So how we add fractions. Okay, well, uh, 34 plus 39, this gives us, what is that, 60? That's 73 over 12. And so I want to make a little bit of a warning that, that there's no simplification that happens at this step. This step. Besides, uh, at least there's, there's no way we can reduce the fraction at this step. I should say no reducing. All right, so when we reduced earlier, we divided out numbers uh, from the top and the bottom. And, and really, uh, it's because uh, we're, you know, our, our numerators and denominators didn't have any addition or subtraction, but, but when they do, uh, we, can't, we can't really reduce um, until that addition or subtraction has been simplified. Okay. And the last step, I, I look at this fraction here and I ask, can this, this fraction be reduced? Uh, and, and I don't think so. I don't think so, no. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's, let's do a few more. Let's keep going. There's, I think this is, uh, this review activity covers a lot of ideas, and I, I really would like to, to, re you know, go through a refresher on, on, on most of them. Okay, let's let's talk about 1G. So 1G says we've got the expression 7x minus 12y minus 6 times 2x minus 3y. Okay, so so here, uh, something we, we want to keep in mind is that uh, there's this notion of combining like terms. And so what are like terms? Well, first off, uh, maybe I should say that terms are really just parts of your expression or your mathematical statement that are separated by addition or subtraction. Um, and, and like terms, well, these are terms with the exact same variables. the exact same powers. And when you combine like terms, uh, you just add their numbers in front, their coefficients, uh, and then you, you, know, you keep the variables the same, you keep the exponents the same. Um, and you can only do that with like terms, terms with the, with the same, exact same variables, in the exact same powers. If they, if you're looking at terms that don't have the same powers, don't have the same variables, um, then you can't add or subtract them in any sensical way. Uh, yeah, you can't add, you can't add or subtract them in any sensical way. Um, in other words, they they really can't be put together. Okay, so uh, I look at this expression, and and this is where this idea of distribution 
might be valuable, right? So earlier we were talking about, well, maybe we want to do, you know, deal with the parentheses first, like order of operations tells us, but, but now that we're dealing with variables, we look at this expression in parentheses, this part in the parentheses, and, and they really, they're not like terms, they just can't be put together um, in any reasonable way without any more information. So uh, one way we can navigate around that but and still simplify our expression is, is really to use this idea of distribution, right? And so maybe I'll write that off to the side, that the distributive law This tells us that you know, if we have some things that are being added, and, and this works with subtraction too, if we have things that are being added or subtracted, and we multiply to that sum, to that difference, some number, some number a, well this is the same as multiplying a to b, multiplying a to c, and then adding the two. And so this is telling us that this part here that I'm, I'm writing in blue, uh, this is telling us minus 6 times 2x minus 3y. It's the same as multiplying negative 6 to 2x and multiplying negative 6 to negative 3y and then you know, including that with the rest of the expression. Another way to think about this is that you know, I'm taking away 6 sets 6 sets of 2x and 6x of negative 3y. And to take away 6 sets of 2x is well to take away 2x, 4x, 6x, 8x, 12x. And similarly, to take away 6 sets of negative 3y is to really add on 18y. Okay, uh, so now we've got some like terms here. I, I see this 7x and this, this negative 12x. Uh, and they are like terms. They have the same variables. Those variables have the same powers. And so this is the same as, oops, it's the same as negative 5x, right? So we're just adding the numbers in front when we're adding or subtracting like terms. And another way I can think about that, that subtraction is 7 minus 12 is, you know, I have $7, I owe someone 12, and pay them, but I still owe them some. I owe them $5. And then we can do the same thing with negative 12y plus 18y, right? They're the exact same variables, or they have the same variables, they have the same powers. And if I owed someone $12 and they gave me 18, or, and, and, or maybe let me rephrase that. If I had $18, I'll use a different color here. Uh, if I had $18 and I owed someone $12, I could pay off that $12 and I'd still be left with $6, six sets of those Y. And that's the final answer. And, you know, what's left is not, they're not like terms, we can't combine them anymore, that's it. Okay, uh, let's see. Here, let me be right back, one second. So have to go turn on the light. Okay, maybe for the sake of keeping this video shorter, I'll, I'll just go over. Uh, I'll just go over two more problems. Okay, so. Uh, Let me let me just go over problem two. So it says evaluate b squared, the expression b squared minus four ac uh, for a is equal to negative six, b is equal to negative two, and c is equal to five. Okay, so we I look at this expression. I, there's all these symbols here. But, but really these symbols, they're just placeholders for numbers and, and we're being told what those numbers are. All right, so A represents this number negative six, C rep or B represents this number negative two, and C represents this number five. So, uh, so what this is saying is, you know, this is saying for me to take my number negative two, right, the number that B represents, and square it. And then I want to subtract away four times my number A. 
but but not just that. Uh, really, here we're multiplying a few things. We're, we're multiplying our number a, and that number is negative six. We're multiplying that with this number c, five, and so. Uh, Maybe I should have said this in the beginning, this, this word evaluate, this word evaluate, it's really telling us to, to, to take our known numbers for these variables and replace them into our expression and compute uh, the number, compute the result out. Right, so find the result, find the value of our expression when the variables are, are the given numbers on the right. And so here it's just important to recognize that, that this, this 4ac is really telling us, because there's no operation between you know, 4a and c, it's telling us multiplication. And then we just have to use our understanding of order of operations to, to fill out the best in that. So I look at this and I see that uh, exponents ought to come first, and this, that's telling me, you know, it's telling me multiply negative 2 with itself. Uh, so negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then we're subtracting away. Uh, so, you know, there's a few different ways you can do this. When you have three things that are being multiplied, you can do that multiplication in, in really any order. Um, so actually, maybe let me let me interpret this as uh, let me look at the the negative six times five part first. So four times what's negative six times five? That's negative thirty. And so this is the same as 4, uh, and then I'm subtracting away 4 times negative 3, or here, maybe I'll say, uh, this is 4, and I'm multiplying negative 4 and negative 30, that's positive 120, this is 124. So there's a few ways we can look at this, but but they all end up being the same. And really, you just want to be careful with with how you're multiplying your signs out. You're, you're keeping track of your signs in here. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to look at this this minus four as as negative four multiplied with negative thirty. Right, and so we have positive one twenty that that we're adding on to four. Okay, so let's do one more. Let's do one more, and, and, and this last one uh, here, I just want to talk about plotting points. So let's say we're looking at an xy plane. All right, so really, this is just one number line here, a horizontal number line we typically label as the x-axis. And so maybe just, to, you know, this is our first time talking about this. Uh, let me really draw the tick marks on this number line, but it's really a number line. And nothing more. It's a number line specifically for x values, values of x. And this vertical line here, we call our vertical, vertical axis, this is uh, our y axis, it's a second number line for y values, right, and so as we go up, I'm looking at positive numbers on this number line, and as we go down, I'm looking at negative numbers on this number line, and really, these together, uh, uh, really kind of give us a whole map of what we call points, uh, kind of like the game Battleship, if you're familiar, so, you know, I, I look at a point over, or you know, some location over here, and this is really uh, we like to we like to call this point, you know, give this point the name determined by its x position, you know, where it is left and right on this map, negative four, and where it is uh, up and down on this map, its y position, 
positive 5. So the left number, the left address of this left coordinate, we like to call, of this point is the x-coordinate, and the right coordinate is the y-coordinate, telling us the, the y-position. This is the point negative 4, 5, and that, that means this point here. Okay, and so uh, the problem, the, let's see, this last problem I want to go over, problem 5, asks us to plot the points, oops, plot uh, the point 4, comma, negative 2, negative 3, comma, 1, and 0, comma, 5 halves. And so in all of these examples, this left number is the x position, the, the, you know, where we're looking at left and right on this, this grid, and the, the right number is the y position, where we are, where we're looking at up and down at each of these points. Uh, and so maybe let me give these all names. Let me call this one A, B, and C. So this point A, uh, its x position is, is you know, it has an x value of 4, but but this would not be the location of that point. This really every point is is given by two numbers, and we we haven't used this piece of information negative two yet. Right, so if we're going to have an x value of 4, we better lie along this this vertical line somewhere. And, and our y value is negative 2, right? So we better lie on this horizontal line somewhere, and, and really our, the location of this point A is right there. Right? So I look at, you know, where this point is in relation to my x-axis, and I see that, that uh, it's got an x value of 4, and I look at its position located, or in relation to the y-axis, and it's got a y value of 3. Okay, what about the point negative 3, comma 1? Well, here I look at the x value of negative 3, the y value of negative 1, this is my point. Oh no, sorry, y value positive 1. This is the point B. And lastly, uh, x value of 0, um, you know, I'm not moving left or right to look for this point, and I go up to a y value, of, you know, positive y value of 5 over 2, that's... 5 over 2 is, is 2 and a half, so it's right there. So this is the point C. Okay, so so that's it for number 5, and, and that's really all the problems I wanted to go over um, in this video. Uh, if you have any questions about the others, you know, you can you can drop in office hours and we can chat, or, or you know, maybe it might be more useful uh, to, to make some posts on the discussion board. Um, and reach out to your neighbors and see if they have any thoughts or opinions or suggestions. Okay. See you in the next video.